Hi, my name is Mike Schakemann, and today I'll be presenting my PhD research on the question of how humans and AI can be effective partners in the presence of ambiguity, which is defined as the quality of being open to more than one interpretation. Ambiguity permeates the way we perceive and interpret information, and it affects how we make decisions. At the same time, AI systems are increasingly being used to support human decision making, not only in simple, well-defined tasks, but also in more complex and critical domains that are riddled with ambiguity. So it seems important that AI methods also acknowledge and ideally support some notion of ambiguity as well. However, existing methods typically assume that there is a single correct answer for any given input, and for the most part simply choose to ignore ambiguity altogether. Let me give you a brief motivating example of what I mean. As you know, one of the many ways that pandemics can impact human societies is that everybody suddenly feels this pressing urge to bake. So I decided to buy a mixer. I asked my smartphone, where can I buy a mixer? Here's the response. It took me a minute to realize why Siri had recommended me a recording studio instead of, say, a Walmart. Siri thought I wanted an audio mixer. Well, sure, this is an honest mistake. The word is ambiguous, but the ambiguity wasn't communicated to me. In this case, it was not a big deal. It was even mildly funny, but that's not always necessarily the case. There are other more critical domains riddled with ambiguity. For example, jurors in court can come to different verdicts despite seeing the exact same evidence. Or doctors can look at the same image and still disagree on the correct diagnosis. In ambiguous but critical decisions like these ones, a socially acceptable approach often requires that people discuss contested issues by considering various perspectives in order to form opinions and guide judgment. Or in other words, engage in group deliberation. And as AI-based systems are increasingly infused into these kinds of domains, it seems important that we as the HCI and AI communities work together towards a future where we incorporate support for ambiguity into the AI workflow. When we look at whether an AI system supports ambiguity, it makes sense to ask, does it acknowledge that there may be more than one valid answer? But simply producing multiple answers is often not enough. As we've seen in the mixer example, different answers can be valid in different contexts, for example. So another dimension worth looking at is whether the systems make any attempt at explaining their output. Let me walk you through how approaches for AI data labeling, AI modeling, and AI user interfaces fit into this grid. In data labeling, ambiguity typically shows as inter-rater disagreement. Most methods treat it as noise in the signal and aim to eliminate it when it arises. Some other work shows that it can be useful to collect rationales from humans to explain why they labeled data in a certain way. Yet other approaches view disagreement as a useful signal and try to preserve it somehow. But only little work has explored the reasons why labelers disagree in the first place and under what circumstances cases of disagreement can be either resolved or should be marked as ambiguous. Second, when it comes to developing AI models from this labeled data, many approaches use what's called single label learning, where each input example is simply mapped to one output label. Now, the field of explainable AI is concerned with making sure that their, that their output is generated in ways that can be understood by humans. Other methods like multi-label learning or label distribution learning do support mapping of a single input example to more than one valid output. This can be useful, for example, when assigning multiple genres to a single movie. But again, that upper right quarter remains underexplored. Third, when it comes to how AI communicates its output to the end user, the most basic approach is to simply show a single output without much explanation. Or we can leverage explainable AI techniques to present the reasons for, for the output that is produced in human interpretable ways. Many AI models 
can also quantify uncertainty for their output, which may then be visualized to the end user. My PhD research focuses on this last quarter. My work supports the following thesis statement, which I'll use to guide the dissertation overview. Both human and artificial intelligence can benefit from novel methods that aim to detect and explain ambiguity. Now, the expected advantages of such systems would be a better understanding of why disagreement arises and when it can be resolved, which we address in Chapter 3, and approaches for handling ambiguity in human decision-making. And we look at the case of unassisted decision-making in Chapter 4, and we address the case of decision-making assisted by AI in Chapter 5. Let's look at Chapter 3, where we provide case studies of using group deliberation in data labeling to understand why disagreement arises and when it can be resolved. We started out by exploring group deliberation in the context of microtask crowdsourcing, for which we developed an interface and workflow that we named Crowd Deliberation. Let me just briefly walk you through the workflow and interface. We focused on the toy task of text document classification. For example, this task of reading a customer review from an online retail store and flagging it as either sarcastic or not. This example here is a customer review for a book called Holy Bible Stock Car Racing, which is actually a serious book that exists with quite decent customer ratings. And say one worker identified this customer review as sarcastic perhaps because they thought the review is making fun of the idea that someone would have a Bible specifically for the niche audience of stock car racing fans. In addition to classifying, that worker would, would have highlighted a part of the text as evidence to support their choice. Now, another worker might come to the conclusion that this is actually a completely serious review after all, in which case we'd put workers together into small groups and let them discuss their disagreements synchronously. But we wanted to encourage good discussion, where workers would try to convince the others by providing good arguments, but also let them convince each other without simply going with the majority vote. So we gave groups an incentive by telling them there is a correct answer, and if you find it and agree on it as a group, each of you will get an extra bonus payment. But in order not to uh, have workers simply coordinate an agreement, among themselves to get that bonus, we gave them a third option. They could agree to disagree by unanimously choosing irresolvable. And we clarified that irresolvable could be one of the correct answers to get the bonus. Workers also flagged the sources of disagreement for each case, which helped us analyze why disagreements arose and under what circumstances they could be resolved. With this interface and workflow, we conducted an observational case study with 316 crowd workers on Amazon's Mechanical Turk with two different types of text classification tasks. One objective task where we had an expert provided answer key available and the sarcasm detection task, which was more subjective. Now, the reasons why workers disagreed varied significantly between the two tasks. For example, in the objective task, workers disagreed six times more often due to missing context compared to the subjective one. On the other hand, contradictory evidence and fuzzy definitions were more common sources of disagreement for the subjective task. Second, the ability of resolving a disagreement also depended on different factors. One important factor was the reason why workers disagreed in the first place. For example, if they disagreed over a particularly subjective case or due to a fuzzy definition or contradictory evidence, it was harder for the group to reach consensus. But we also looked at factors concerning the group dynamics. Groups with a more even contribution among discussion members had a harder time reaching consensus than groups where, for example, one worker said much more than the others. Surprisingly, we also saw that groups with an initial consensus level of two versus one, meaning that two workers agreed with each other and a third worker disagreed with them, resolved their disagreements less often than groups with just two workers disagreeing with each other. Zooming in on just the objective task, we could measure the accuracy of worker labels by comparing against the expert provided answer key. 
We found that deliberation increased label accuracy compared to several baselines without deliberation. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that using deliberation in a clever way can help with labeling ambiguous data by exposing reasons why some cases are ambiguous and lead to disagreement and potentially also by providing answer quality. Sorry, by improving answer quality. But earlier we discussed that ambiguity can also happen in more important decision-making scenarios, such as medical diagnosis. Fortunately, I found some, some people at Google who were interested in this problem. They were building a medical AI that could help screen for diabetic eye disease. And that is actually the leading cause of blindness among working age adults worldwide. And once you turn blind from it, your vision, your vision loss cannot be reversed. But if you're diagnosed early and you're treated appropriately, you can keep your eyesight. How is it diagnosed? You take a photo of a patient's eye and you show it to an eye doctor. Now, unfortunately, if you show the same photo to two different doctors, there is roughly a 35% chance that they'll disagree on the diagnosis. And there's really no other objective method to tell which doctor is right and which is wrong. Since AI models are developed and measured using this same diagnostic reference standard, which is obviously riddled with ambiguity, it is important that we address doctor disagreements without simply disregarding one opinion in favor of another one. And that seems like a great use case for expert deliberation. Since medical doctors are busy and can be quite hard to bring together at the same place of time, we developed an asynchronous and web-based deliberation workflow in which multiple doctors first interpreted the same image independently and then reviewed any conflicts in a round-based fashion, one doctor at a time. This is what the web-based interface looked like showing a picture of the patient's eye on the left side and a panel for submitting a diagnosis and for text-based open-ended discussion on the other side. We compared two different approaches for deliberation. This baseline setup, which you see here, versus a more structured approach in which also doctors were forced to explain their reasoning using 10 diagnostic criteria relevant to diabetic eye disease and by differentiating from three other types of eye disease, which can resemble diabetic eye disease in some cases. We visualize disagreements over each of these additional criteria throughout each deliberation round. With this setup, we ran a between subjects experiment with 12 doctors, forming four groups of three doctors each, and each of the four doctor groups labeled and discussed the same set of roughly 500 images. Two of the groups followed the structured approach, whereas the other two groups used the baseline approach. Here's what we learned. The graph you see here shows the percentage of patient cases that doctors agreed on here on the y-axis over the course of multiple deliberation rounds on the x-axis. We saw that the structured deliberation approach was more efficient in terms of the number of rounds that doctors needed to reach consensus. Also, both approaches were equally re reliable, both in terms of internal reproducibility, as well as compared to an external gold standard produced through in-person deliberation. But we wanted, to, we wanted to get some more out of this. After all, we did have a rich data set, which had detailed discussions and explanations from a handful of world-renowned medical specialists for 500 very difficult cases. So we thought, why not use it as training material for other human labelers? Which brings us to chapter four. Here we look at the question of how we can leverage deliberation data to improve human decision-making when it is not assisted by an AI. The idea we had in mind was to repurpose the discussion data from the previous study, which again was produced by just a handful of specialists, to up-level many more medical generalists who are simply more widely available and a little less expensive to pay for as well. The hope was that these generalists would then ultimately label even more image data while being able to diagnose difficult cases more accurately. We tested this idea using a relatively straightforward human training experiment where we, where we recruited 10 medical doctors who first diagnosed a set of 36 training images 
followed by training feedback, and then another separate image set of 36 other images to test their diagnostic performance after training. All of these 72 images had been discussed by specialists before, and the specialists had arrived at a conclusive diagnosis for each case. In our study, each generalist received one of two different types of feedback, performance only or performance and discussion. In the baselines, in the baseline called performance only, generalists saw the images they had diagnosed and a breakdown of where their own diagnosis differed from the answer key. And in the second type of training feedback, which we called performance and discussion, they also saw a deliberation discussion from those specialists that had produced the answer key. Let me remind you here that these discussions had never been generated with the purpose in mind to be used as training material for other doctors. Instead, they were rather a byproduct of three specialized doctors fighting over the right diagnosis. Nonetheless, these discussions actually turn out to be useful for two reasons. They were super specific to the case at hand, and they explained important subtleties that could lead to different interpretations of the same case. Overall, we got, we got positive feedback from doctors. When we look at comprehension, we see that it helped them understand the reasoning behind the correct diagnosis significantly better. When doctors reviewed cases without a discussion, they strongly agreed that they understood the rationale behind the correct answer only about 20% of the time, here in dark blue. But when they did read a discussion, this number increased to 50%. So we saw a significant increase in doctors thinking that they fully understood the correct diagnosis for very difficult patient cases. Lastly, we observed that reading deliberation discussions help doctors improve their diagnostic accuracy. For one of the four diseases that doctors diagnosed, Generalists who did read specialist discussions improved their accuracy roughly 10% more than the generalists in the baseline group. By now, I've hopefully convinced you that deliberation data is useful in its own right and that you can make deliberation much more efficient by adding structure cleverly. Apart from that, structured deliberation data would also hopefully be useful for our other goal. That is to explore AI systems that can help humans handle ambiguity in decision making. Which brings us to chapter five, where we explore the question of how we can, of how we can leverage deliberation data to explore AI systems that communicate ambiguity in their output. However, this kind of AI concept doesn't really exist yet. We called it ambiguity aware AI. I had a lot of questions about what something like that would look like, how people would interact with it, how people would perceive it, if it would change their workflow. So I decided to build on the lessons learned so far and created a data labeling platform that would capture human arguments in a much more structured way. Which brings us to Crowd EEG. Crowd EEG is an online platform that enables crowds of medical experts to collaboratively interpret and discuss biosignal data. Here you see an example of how experts can look at and navigate through complex time series data like brainwave activity, eye movements, heartbeat and breathing patterns. With the goal to classify individual chunks of data within the timeline. We built deliberation into the platform. Experts can jump to regions where other experts disagree with them and browse other people's arguments. And what's special about these arguments is that they are highly structured. In order to justify a classification choice, experts are forced to select the specific labeling instructions from the medical guidelines that they use to make that decision. In addition, they could of course also explain more in their own words. Using this highly structured workflow, we went ahead and hired 36 sleep health experts and put them in groups of three to perform the task of sleep stage classification followed by deliberation. And they did that for 12 different patient records, which in total um, sum to 10,000 chunks of biosignal data or cases to be classified. That resulted in about 1600 case discussions with structured arguments from all three experts per group. We used this data to analyze the reasons why disagreements arose and why some persisted despite deliberation.
But in the interest of time, I'll skip the details of this observational study and instead tell you more about how we used a small part of this data set to simulate an ambiguity aware AI assistant. Think about a scenario where an imperfect AI and a human work together to interpret and classify data in a time sensitive workflow, meaning that given a limited time window, the human must prioritize which of the AI provided assessments to double check and potentially correct and which ones to simply trust blindly. In addition, let's also assume that this classification task they are trying to accomplish together is ambiguous and full of expert disagreement. Now, what if we had an AI that helps the human by flagging potentially ambiguous cases? And what if the AI could also explain why a case is ambiguous? Would that help the human? Would the collaboration be more effective? Would the human trust the AI more? To test this, we used a Wizard of Oz approach, meaning that instead of building an actual predictive model, we pretended to have an AI with this kind of ability by taking disagreement information and structured arguments from our data set of real world expert discussions and by overlaying that information on top of output from a conventional machine learning model. You can see our interface here. Now we were curious to see if experts would pay any attention to these ambiguity explanations that we showed to them. And if yes, how would that affect their decisions? To investigate this question, we added noise to ambiguity explanations. And we did so by replacing some of the arguments by random other arguments from the medical guidelines. So in some way, we turned some of the real world and high quality ambiguity explanations into more noisy versions of themselves that were slightly less relevant to the ambiguous case at hand. We then conducted a within subjects experiment with 12 sleep technologists to compare this ambiguity aware AI assistant to a conventional one. Each of the 12 experts interacted with both AIs in a counterbalanced fashion, and the task was to review and correct as many of the AI suggestions as possible within a limited time of 15 minutes. We selected data records from two different patients of similar age and health condition to make sure that with each AI assistant, experts looked at a new patient record in order to avoid potential learning effects. Taken together, these data records uh, summed to about 1,500 chunks of biosignal data to be classified. Both AIs, conventional and ambiguity aware, used a state-of-the-art deep neural network published in prior work to produce classifications along with quantitative uncertainty information. And to simulate the ambiguity aware version, we also leveraged deliberation data to highlight and to explain ambiguous cases. In addition, we also used the consensus labels from these deliberation discussions as a gold standard to measure classification accuracy. Let's look at the results. When we look at which cases experts decided to focus on, within that limited time they were given, we see that experts reviewed significantly fewer ambiguous cases when using the conventional AI compared to the ambiguity aware one. And this result highlights that case ambiguity, when it is communicated, can be a relevant property for experts to prioritize which AI suggestions to review first. Zooming out, uh, actually zooming in, into just the ambiguity aware AI, we tried to understand if those ambiguity explanations we displayed were taken into account at all by experts. We compared experts' accuracy for cases that had those random arguments sprinkled in to cases where arguments were displayed correctly as per the original expert discussion. We see that experts did pay attention to ambiguity explanations, but the difference in accuracy we see here also highlights the fact that it is important to not only explain ambiguity somehow, but to explain it well. Because when ambiguity is pointed out, but not explained well, it can harm human judgment and reduce accuracy. In summary, my PhD research looked at the problem of handling ambiguity in human AI interaction. And my core contribution has been to introduce group deliberation into data labeling as a tool to detect and explain ambiguity. We've shown how the resulting deliberation data can be used in different ways. For example, as training material to improve the performance and experience of human labelers. 
Finally, I've used the liberation data to simulate and explore ambiguity-aware AI. In my future research, I'd like to address some limitations of this work. For instance, we should aim to validate our findings with larger and more diverse participant pools and perhaps expand to other domains as well. Second, the ambiguity-aware AI that we explored was simulated and we should aim to develop actual predictive models that support ambiguity. Another open question that our work only scratched the surface of is under what circumstances can we justify the additional cost of performing a liberation to collect ambiguity data? In the case studies that we conducted, we observed that vague labeling guidelines are a common source of disagreement and ambiguity. And I believe there could be value in trying to extract information from the liberation data to automatically suggest which of these guideline instructions need to be refined or whether new ones should be added altogether. Finally, there are lots of questions around when ambiguity matters. For example, should an AI communicate ambiguous cases selectively, say, only if they have the potential to impact meaningful outcomes? Should AIs adapt to user characteristics like ambiguity tolerance? I think there is room for more research to answer these kinds of questions. But for now, I'd like to close this presentation and thank everybody who was involved in making this research not only possible, but also a fun experience for me to pursue. Thank you very much.